In my life, God, I feel like, has been trying to lead me to a goal that he knows would be good for me because he knows how I act and how my personality is. And he's like, I think you would be good if you serve here, if you go here, if you do this and that. It's like a game of blues clues <laughs> for me. That's how I, that's how I like relate back to it. After I find the last piece, I'll be at where God wants me to be. So my first clue was when I intended my second CIY trip when Micah came up in my life. I was sitting on the side and as I'm like sitting there and he came over to me, he's like, um, he's like, are you okay? I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm good. He's like, you know, I feel like you're thinking about something right now or there's something going on in your life that, and I should pray for you. And I was, and the crazy thing was, literally moments before he walked up to me, I was like, God, please give me a sign. It was, it was a big life changer for me because then as I walk, walked out, I was like, he's here. That was like, God telling me to get started and I should get involved and I should do everything for him. So that's when I ended up serving. And um, what I ended up doing was sound and tech. Early 2017, I was talking to uh, someone about being a, uh, being a pastor. And a whole bunch of people started like finding that out randomly. And like one day in school, I was like walking down the hall and um, Coach Brooks, I call him Coach Brooks, Mr. Brooks. Um, he was like, he was like, Isaiah. I was like, it's like, like, yeah. I was like, oh. in my in the back of my head, I was like, oh, geez, I'm in trouble. No one calls my name in school, so I was like, I'm like walking up. He's like, heard you want to be pastor. I was like, I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I do. And he's like, he's like, he's like, man, stick, he's like, stick to that. I was like, I was like, all right, thanks, man. He's like, you know, gave each other a little, you know, a little man hug or whatever. And he goes, all right, man, I'll see you later. You know, give him a little hug. But and then like everybody just found that out, and then. Um, they're like, man, they're like, I, I say I never knew you want to be a pastor. I was like, I was like, yeah, I want to be a pastor. And then everybody was like, why, why, why? And I was like, because in my life, pastors have really changed my life a lot. And I was like, I was like, I want to become a pastor and do that for somebody else's life. I want to be that person that everyone can trust. And I want to be there for everyone. You can't always be there for everyone, but I want to be there and at least help. Because maybe that'll change their life and they can change somebody else's life. So then I'm like, like a, it's like a domino effect, I guess, of people just, you know, changing their life, turning to God, and then spreading out, you know? So that's why, that's, that's what happened to me. <laughs> As it continued and the school year came up, that's when Exponential came up. I was able to attend um, Exponential because uh, Jared Fox, the pastor, he, I guess something came up and he couldn't do it, and he was like, I just want to find somebody who else who can go. And he was like, I know you want to be a pastor. And I was like, I think it'll be really good for you. And I was like, I was like, really? I was like, all right. I was like, that's cool. I'll, I'll go. It was the second week of school. So my mom was, you know, a little judgy about it, but she was like, go ahead. It's for God, you know? So, so I went, I was actually like understanding what was being taught to me. And, and, um, something that I thought was like God being like, Hey, you're on the right path was when he was like, Hey, you know, you should do this raffle. You know, I put my name in and I ended up winning an Apple TV. And I was like, I was like, wow. And that was like another clue. So it seems a little cheesy, but it was like another clue. Like God was like, hey, you're going in the right place. Here's a present. And I was like, yes, I was like, thank you. You know, and I was really happy. And then more trips came up and I got to hear different people's stories and what they've done like in, in their ministries at their churches and what they've done to, create an environment to tell everyone that God doesn't care about your past. He only cares about where you're going to be in the future. And he wants you to be involved with him. So it was all those pieces coming together and leading up. I feel like God's been like, so look, for church, everybody kind of knew me as being tall and being able to play basketball. So whenever somebody saw me, they were like, oh, look, there's Isaiah. He plays basketball. What a great guy. You know, I don't, I'm not just a basketball player. I'm more than that. I think God wants me to go in this direction. He, I think he wants me to be active in the church and more involved with the church and, you know, be a pastor. And if maybe not a pastor, maybe a church planner or somebody that just spreads the word of God. Something, something I guess I could say I, I foresee for myself, Isaiah in 2018 is, a more, more open Isaiah. Really? <laughs> really? Okay, you're going in with your brother. You're going in with your brother. My name is Alisa, and I'm Michael. 
aka Michael. My name is Elisa and this is my husband Michael. Growing up I attended uh, the Russian Baptist Church in Baltimore City or Slavic Baptist Church in Baltimore City. I love that I grew up there where I got, that's where I got baptized was at the Slavic Church. But around when I was like 24, 25, I started going to mountain. <laughs> hey, goo. <laughs> I kind of was a come to church, listen to the message and leave kind of person because at the time I was in grad school and starting to go to mountain was kind of my, my break where I could just come in, you know, be filled with the message and leave and just kind of keep it with me for the whole week. After I started uh, dating Mike, yeah, that's when things changed. So Nathan McDade married us and I feel like he labeled our story best in saying that she brought me back to God, but I brought her closer to God. We were hanging out and talking, and I was like, look, I need you to know something. <laughs> I go to church every Sunday, and that's really, really important to me, and I hope over time that's something that we can do together. So I agreed to go to Mount with her, and uh, we, we went the first time knowing that I didn't always see eye to eye with her religiously. I was kind of nervous. It's a lot different from churches I used to attend. Um, you know, tend, tend to get stuffy and... I know exactly what he means when time. he says that. So uh, we went for a couple times. Um, it was when Mountain was doing their big upgrade uh, into like the new video boards and adding more cameras and so I kind of said to her, like, if we're going to be attending regularly, I'd like to find kind of a home. You know, I've always had... Uh, That's exactly what I always wanted. <laughs> I've, always had, I've always had a background in, um, in production and, and doing, doing the lights and uh, sound and all that stuff. We kind of went and felt it out a little bit, and it seemed like it was a real home for me. I could go to church and also do something that I'm very passionate about. So it was like, it was a win-win. I was like, okay, um, I don't know anything about lights. I don't know anything about sound, um, but I'm sure I can find a place on the worship arts team. And luckily we did. We got really blessed with, uh, you know, the worship team taking us in and. It was really like a second family for us. We felt so close to them even after a short period of time, we got to incorporate a lot of the people we serve with week in and week out in our in our wedding and having them there. Something that was really cool because we had only started serving for a little bit, but uh, Mike's brother passed away a year ago and his uh, viewing was in Annapolis and we had only known these guys for a few months and they drove all the way from Hartford County to Annapolis to be there for us and for Mike's family. And I thought that that in itself was huge, huge that they were there for us. So I thought that was really, really, really cool. And I think because they did that for us, I think that's what kind of like solidified, like these are, these, are, these guys are gonna be around. You know, she started going to church. I joined her, we started serving. Um, and throughout the past year with our wedding and our, our relationship and our family growing, we've noticed our, our mountain family growing as well with everybody that we serve with, with the relaunch of the Bel Air campus and, and all the Abingdon campus stuff, you know, we were able to help set some of that up and kind of be a part of that. Uh, the online, the online campus that my mom watches every Sunday. So we, we were able to bring her into, into the mountain family. That was really, that was really cool. Yes. And it was really fun to see. Yeah, we're so grateful and we can't wait to see the church grow. We can't wait to see what the future brings for, for our family and, um, and for our church family. Was it me? <laughs> I don't know. You <laughs> tell me. Easter? When was Easter? <laughs> April. <laughs> we are Luis and Carol Machado and our story began in Easter Sunday. We came up and, uh, to one of the services and from the parking to the walking community to the ushers, to everybody, was being, being, being transparent, being clear. Then we went to the check-in for the kids and check the kids into the kids' ministry. They immediately fall in love with the ministry. They were seeing like, this is, this definitely could be home. 
the girls immediately, you know, they were like, this is so much fun. So looking at their faces and then when they come out, uh, they wouldn't want to go. And as a mom, that's something that is the most important thing for me, you know, as choosing a church home uh, or a home church is knowing that my kids will grow spiritually, spiritually the same way we will. But then we made that first step. We was like, oh, we need to see more about what is the vision of the house and, and where we need to go. Uh, and what is our next step? And then month and in five minutes happened. MI5, yes. MI5 happened. They received this letter that says, hey, we, we get invited to the stakeholders meeting. We're like, that, that sounds like for important uh, like, people. Why like, are we getting like, that letter? It's like, <laughs> why well, we get this letter? So we got this beautiful letter. I was like, let's go. Let's see, check it out. We went to the stakeholders meeting and it was a, a, a very good information meeting about how Unleash Love is taking um, this commitment that people did a year ago and, and the results of that. It was like, we had to do something. We just cannot sit, just sit here. It's not what God designed us to do. So we want to make sure what we could do more. So you go and you're natural, you know, I would say in my flesh thinking, okay, so then I need to get a job with my PhD so I can make more money and I can make a really good commitment to the church. We're military, we plan everything. So our plan was to move to Maryland, you have your job, I have mine. The girls go to school, we make a good amount of money so we can provide more for the church and help, you know, expand the kingdom. Uh, curveball. We sat down at a table and I was like, baby, I need to make sure you, you sit down here and, and let, let's, let's sit down, we need to have a conversation. And, am I in trouble? And exactly, that was the first thing on her <laughs> mind. It was like, oh, am I in trouble? I did something wrong or what happened? And then we all, I opened my heart. I was like, this is what God is telling me. God is telling me to allow you to volunteer 100% of your time. Then she started crying. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> what are you crying? That's what we do. I'm supposed to be crying. <laughs> and then she tells me that God is telling her. That's this. what God was leading my spirit to volunteer 100% in give it all I got. I think that's how I wrote it in that commitment card. Give it all I have for the kingdom of God and the children ministry at Mountain. Just to make a great ministry even better. So a little bit about my commitment. I always have a passion for missions. I always have a passion to serve more and give more of uh, everything that I have. A hurricane hits in Puerto Rico. And I was like, oh, oh, what is we gonna do? Now I get to go into this, not only really go, but to actually lead the missions trips to Puerto Rico. When he wrote it in the car that he wanted to do missions, I was like, how am I gonna do it? Um, when God is telling me not to work and go volunteer. And, um, and then to see him light up, you know, for something that is bigger than himself and goes beyond words can describe is, he is walking on his purpose. Right now we are in the Marriage, on, Marriage the on the Rock group. We joined the church and it's like, there's a lot of people. The enemy can put in your mind, you're just one more number. They don't know if you're here or not. You're not that important. However, having small groups is, you have your small family within a bigger family, and that's Mountain. It's to hear each other, you know, to hug each other, to be there, you know, in the, when there's needs, when the Puerto Rican, the disaster happened, those are the people calling you to see how is your family? Is there anything that we can do? How we can serve you? Is your parents are okay? Are they coming? That happens when you are part of a big family. <laughs> it's, it's how a big church could be, get small, because you got those, people inside that small group. It's, it's how you break down, it's how we do community. How, that's how, uh, how we serve each other, how we take care of everybody's need, how we grow. How we love each other. You know, you cannot love on people when you're paying attention to the preacher. You know, when you have small groups, you go, you get to love on each other. It's not a building, it's a place where you belong. And that's what we feel with Mountain. I come and we get to be, like my daughter says, we're the machados, we're crazy, we're loud, we're fun, and we are accepted and loved just the way we are. Exactly. So that's why it feels like home. So get ready. Yeah. Get ready. He's going to be like, huh. Well, uh, my name is Neil Gunter, and this is my son, Jacob. 
and he is eight years old. I serve on parking team one and greeting team three. And so when Jacob is with me for greeting and we greet together and uh, it's wonderful, I love it. The end of February, 2015, Jacob and I flew down to Florida where I grew up while we were in Florida. Jacob's mother was at home packing up and moving out. And it was really, really difficult having to tell Jacob that um, we were gonna be living in two separate homes now. I started attending Mountain regularly and driving from my home in Owings Mills since 2015. I would bring Jacob on the opportunity, you know, on the weeks that I had the opportunity where his mom wasn't gonna be at the other church. He loved going to Mountain. He loved Mountain Kids. And uh, that made it a lot easier for me. For most of 2017, it has been a teaching journey with Jacob. More so when we moved here, I told him about the Abingdon campus, that I was gonna be a part of it. And he asks, you know, eight-year-old questions. I'm not the most patient guy in the world. And I found myself really having to beg God for patience because I didn't want to be like how my dad was to me. I wanted to be different. I knew I was a dad that cared, but now I was hands-on and I was leading and I had to lead him. If I didn't want the world to lead him, I had to lead him. And I just started learning how to lead him. And I've made many mistakes and I know my mistakes are not finished. And so we had some teachable moments and it was as if the Holy Spirit allowed me to recognize that it was a teachable moment. And I would just say, okay, grab your Bible and let's see what it says about this. And I was showing him how to use his Bible. And every time we had one of those teachable moments, he got real calm and real quiet and really engaged into what we were doing. And you could tell that it was different. Uh, we were eating dinner, it was a Wednesday evening. We were standing at the counter. We said our prayers and we, had, we were eating. And just a couple minutes into it, he just got real quiet. And he said, Dad, I just accepted Jesus into my heart. Jacob's allowing Jesus into his heart was totally unexpected. We had been talking about it and I had been explaining to him, maybe in theory, like what it is that we're trying to accomplish. And I knew that over time, that if I kept on using God's word and speaking it into his life, that at some point in time, he'll start to get it. But I didn't expect it on October 17th. That was totally out of left field. 2017 um, started off with connecting with a small group, moving out of a home that we were in for 10 years, coming here thinking I was gonna be going to the mountain road and now I'm going to Abingdon. They opened the Abingdon. Nothing of which I expected. My son accepting Jesus into his heart. It's just been so wonderful. It hasn't been easy. In fact, it's been very challenging at times. But I see what God is doing in my life and how his ways are so much higher than my ways. And his plan for me is very different than what I had had in mind. And I couldn't be more thankful.
Amen, right? Good morning. Happy New Year. Uh, it's almost here, a couple more hours, and then we're off into 2018. Crazy, right? Crazy stuff. My name is Zach. I'm excited to be with you this morning. Uh, some of you maybe have seen me around or kind of work behind the scenes, but I'm excited to, to have a little chat with you and converse a little bit. Um, the film was awesome. I love seeing that. It, it, it's such a great way to kind of just look into some people's lives and what happened in 2017 for them. And it kind of causes us, those who watch it, the viewers, to kind of think about our 2017. What, what was it like for you and what was it like for me, um, what did God do for this community here at Mountain? What did God do for you? And where is God working in your life right now? And what is God going to do in 2018, right? It's really interesting when you, when you begin to think about that and you get caught up in the hoopla and the celebration and say, hey, happy new year, but you have a moment here to think about that. What's God doing in your life? And for me, 2017 was a whirlwind. It was just so fast and so quick and involved a major transition for me. Um, uh, my wife, Hillary, who is a Mountain Kids, um, Mountain Roads uh, kids minister here, a kids pastor, and we, we were in East Tennessee last year, believe it or not, for a little bit. And we were going to school and going to seminary. I was working at a coffee company. I was... Um, a copier delivery boy, so I would show up with these big machines and roll them in, and everyone would be like, oh, new copier, yay, and then I would get a bunch of candy. It was awesome. Uh, it, it really was. It was really cool, and I would come home, and I'd have candy wrappers in my pants, and then I would throw them in the laundry, and I would do the laundry, and then I would take the candy wrappers and throw them away, but then when Hillary would do the laundry, she'd come running and be like, what did you, you had like six pieces of candy in one day. What are you doing? <laughs> Can't be doing that. It was, just, it was fun. It was a fun time. And she was a children's minister. She, she worked at a local church. And so we had a local church there. And we were, uh, you know, we were serving and working and, and, and being in the community there. And God changed the plans very quickly. Mountain called and said, hey, what's your 2017 look like? Because there's an opportunity up here for you and Hillary. And we were like, no, 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 no. We, we've been here for, I think we got married here. This is East Tennessee. This is our home. We still have school left. We're still getting our master's degree. And so if you asked me last year, I would be up here speaking to you all on New Year's Eve. I would have slapped you silly, right? <laughs> like, are you kidding me? 25-year-old up here speaking to all these people? Come on now. Slap you silly. I've never had any association with the Mid-Atlantic, Baltimore, D.C., never been. Northeast, not going there. Never been there. <laughs> uh, I've never had a crab cake. Uh, uh, never had Old Bay. Don't know what that is, you know. I, I, I had never had um, Brooms Bloom. Man, that sounds good. <laughs> never had that, you know. I had never seen so many people show up in Ravens jerseys to a church on a Sunday <laughs> until I came to Mountain Christian Church. <laughs> I don't know whether we should celebrate that or be like, okay. <laughs> um, but yes, I had never, I, I had done all these things. These are all brand new stuff. Oh, I had never had a burger cookie. Anybody had a, what is that? I never had a burger cookie I thought it was called a booger cookie first, and so I thought it was a kid's thing. And then, I had, then I took a bite of one, and I said, yep, you guys are doing it right. This is good. This is home. <laughs> it was good. It was, it was a good year for me uh, personally, but it was a year of a big change, moving from East Tennessee and coming to Maryland. It's a different culture, different gaps. I'm originally from California, so I really I made the move to East Tennessee and you know, got used to the culture, but then I had to do it again. And so that was really that was difficult for me. But we love it, and we've been here for a couple months now. You know, and maybe that's happened in your story. You had a major change. In my story and the stories you just saw, one of the key themes is that 2017 did not go as they planned. 2017 didn't go the way that they planned, and that I planned, and maybe that you planned. You know, Isaiah talked about blues clues, you know, God playing a game of blues clues with him. Oh, here's this, here's that, let's go, let's go, this, this. find that blue dog. Maybe in Blue's Clues, and he found his calling. Mike and Elisa's story had a death and their family, and then Mountain comes, and Mountain Worship Team shows up and says, we're here for you. Luis and Carrie Machado come on Easter Sunday of last year, and then by, next, by this Christmas, they're invested. Luis is leading trips, and Carrie is now on staff. It's crazy how quick things can change and when you open your eyes and your ears to God's plan. And Neil, going through a struggling time with the divorce and separation, but in the midst of that, Jacob accepts Jesus and is greeting at the Abingdon campus. Hallelujah for that. I love that. 
Things don't go as planned sometimes, but God is still good. And it reminds me of Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. It says, in their hearts, humans will plan their course. We're going to plan our course. That's who we are. We're planning people. We're routine people. But the Lord, God, will establish our steps. So we can plan and have these things mapped out, but God is going to be the one who's going to take the hit to the hand, our hamstring and take our first step, and then the next hamstring and take the next step. God will establish the steps if you allow him. Chapter 19, verse 21, it says, many are the plans in a person's heart. I mean, I've got a million plans, it feels like. Maybe you do too, of what's to come. But the Lord's purpose prevails. The Lord's purpose prevails. And man, do we need that after the year we've had. Oh, man, the Lord's purpose will prevail and is going to continue to move in 2018. God's involved in your life. That's what it's saying. God's there. God's involved in your life. God's involved in my life. God's involved in the mountain community. That's amazing. God wants something to do with you and us as a people. His goodness, his truth, his mercy, his justice is alive and well in this church and is ready to move into 2018 with a plan. But what is that plan? God gets right down into our stuff. That's where people get hung up on. No, 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 no. Don't mess with my house or don't mess with me where I live right now. Don't mess with my family. Don't mess with my retirement. God has to get down into your stuff and change it and move it because everybody we read in the scriptures, their life completely transforms. The 12 disciples left everything they had to follow this Jesus guy. That's where it gets difficult and a choice has to be made. So what is making you closed off to Jesus? I don't know where you are. Whether it's the first time you're hearing about this Jesus guy or, you know, you've been a Christian for years and years and years. You still have to wake up and make a choice to say yes to Jesus every day. It's not just a one-time thing. It's a continuing saying, yes, God, you are going to work in my life today. Yes, God, you are going to work in my life today. Every single day. You have to make those choices. So I don't know where you are, but I want to ask the question of what's making you closed off if you're kind of staying away from Jesus and putting Jesus in a box or putting God in a box. I'll be honest with you, and I'll tell you what it was for me. It was comfortability, the idea of being comfortable. I'll be authentic and open with you all. You know, I made the move in May. We moved here in May. We had a good time. It was awesome. And then I got kind of caught up with, okay, we made the move. I'm good. I don't need to do anything else. God, God, we, we made the move. We made the transition. We're good. We don't, God, just, I'll come to Sundays and I'll, and, you know, I'll work at the church, but I won't be the church, you know, or I'll come to the church and, and sit in the, and sit in the chairs, but I won't, I, I don't want to be the church. Just, <laughs> just give me a break. And I got comfortable. Nine to five every day, go home, eat dinner, go to sleep, cuddle with my cats. <laughs> Sorry. I like cats. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, I got comfortable with that. That's not the way Jesus calls us to live. Jesus calls us to live radically and to unleash love on every person we see, and that takes a risk. And I saw this in Puerto Rico. I went to Puerto Rico a couple weeks ago. Luis Machado led the trip with Lloyd Ramirez, and Mike Janko was there, Tom Moen and Nathan Medade, and we went, and we just were scouting and listening to the area. We're not going to change anything. We're not going to do anything crazy. We're just going to listen and see what Puerto Rico needs, especially the West Coast. We went, we went to this church called Catacumba 5, and we started listening and figuring out what they were doing and trying to figure out what Mountain's going to do for 2018 for them and try to lift up the church in that area to be the hands and feet of Jesus and just to help, not to change, but just to help. And we saw and we, and we got some good information. But there was one moment where I realized I needed a little kick in the shorts, as Ben would say. I needed to get out of my comfort zone and do something about what I'm going to do for 2018. We were, at a, we were at a graphics tea shop, and we were buying this graphics tea. We had about an hour and a half to spare. We wanted to get a souvenir or, you know, whatever. It was Nathan McDay's idea. So we went, <laughs> and we had some fun. <laughs> Love Nathan. But we went, and um, we get to this, this, this mom-and-pop store. It's um, owned by a family, two boys, about, about 16 to 19, I think, um, in that range, and a husband and a wife. We didn't get the husband's name, but we got the wife's name, Janet. Her name was Janet. And we show, we show up into the shop, and we buy these shirts, and they start printing them and putting the graphic that we wanted on the T-shirt. And I'll never forget this moment. There's a big counter in front of us, 
Mike Janko is sitting in a stool. If you know Mike, he's a building ops guy, absolutely incredible human. I mean, he loves Jesus, he's on fire for Christ. And he reaches out and he touches the guy on the shoulder on his, and he says, hey, I just have a sense, I need to pray for you, or we need to pray for you. Can we do that? And I'll never forget that because I'm sitting in the back of the store with Nathan on our phones just waiting for our stuff to be done. And we're like, did he just ask to pray for that dude? We don't even know these people. And then Luis and Lloyd were on both sides of him, and they kind of looked inward and saying, okay, all right. And it was frozen for a moment, and it was silent like this. And he stuttered a little bit, and, uh, and then his voice kind of stuttered, and then a resounding yes came from the corner of the room where Janet was, putting in the information. She stood up, she said, yes, and you could pray for me right now. And you can pray for this family right now. I get goosebumps telling the story because I was like, man, I, what? And so we, 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 we circle up and we begin to get emotional. They begin to cry and we kind of begin to cry too as well. We prayed in Portuguese, we prayed in Spanish, and we prayed in English. And their story was that they had lost their biggest machine in the hurricane. Their family was okay, their house seemed to be okay, but they lost their lifeline of their business. It was irreplaceable. They had to buy a new one. It was gonna cost half the business to do that. And they began to bicker with one another and the boys were fighting and... They didn't know what to do, whether to scrap the business and go or to, to give half of it up and, and hope that people come to buy shirts. Maybe you've been there, your business people out there. And we begin to cry and say, man, my heart is breaking for you because my heart breaks for what God's heart breaks. And we pray and we pray and we pray. And after we finish praying, we look at them in the eyes and we say, hey, we're coming back. We're going to come back every month, hopefully the next year. We're going to come check in on you and see how you're doing, maybe. We're going to do that in Houston. We're going to do that in Florida and the U.S. Virgin Islands as well. But in that moment, for me personally, it gave me a little kick in the shorts, and I said, could I have done what Mike Jenko did? Could I have reached my hand out to somebody I didn't know and say, hey, can I pray for you, or can I give you a meal, or can I give you a jacket, or can I give you some shoes or something? What can I do to be the hands and feet of Jesus to you? Because that's what the church looks like. That's what the church does. And that's what Jesus did because Jesus looked for the Zacchaeus. Jesus looked for the woman caught in adultery. Jesus looked for the woman at the well, the Nicodemus. I can name, we all can name thousands of biblical characters that Jesus looked for and said, that is the person I want the most. Who is that in your life? Who is that in your life? In 2018, who do you need to look for to be the hands and feet of Jesus too. He gave me that kick in the shorts and I say, I don't know. I don't know for me. That means I need to get out in the community more. I need to be in the coffee shops. I need to be in the car dealerships. I need to be looking and talking and conversing with people who don't call this place home and say, have you heard of Jesus? Have you heard of the hope that Jesus offers? Not what the media says, not what you know, so-and-so says, but have you heard the true biblical look at Jesus and what he does and what he did, not for you, but for the whole world and that you can be a part of that? in 2018. Who is that in your life? Is it you? Is this your first time at church, second time at church, third time at church? Is it you? Is Jesus wanting you? If he is, welcome home. This is a place for you. So how do we do that? Two things. We'd be grateful for 2017. That's the first thing. We gotta be grateful for 2017, even though it was a dark year. It really was. In our community here, specifically, too, we're still grateful for 2017. We take, a play, we take a page out of Neil's book and we listen to him and we say we're grateful even though it was the hardest year yet for a lot of us because God is still moving and is there. And second, we'd be open towards 2018. We'd be open towards 2018. We open our hearts, we open our minds, our eyes, our ears, and we listen to the people on the fringes and we find them and we say Jesus is here for you and is ready to bring hope. So let's make that commitment together today and now. Let's come back next year. Oh, well, that's cool. <laughs> next year. <laughs> and be open to what God's gonna do with Mountain and what God's gonna do with you and this community. And that may take an action step. For me, it was getting rid of my comfortable self. It was me saying, okay, maybe one of these office days, I need to spend it in a coffee shop and talking to people, not in my cubicle typing away. Maybe I need to go here. Maybe I need to talk to this person. Maybe I need to make a phone call here. Maybe I've got a hard heart or some cynicism, maybe that's you. Maybe you've got some doubt and some fear with all this. Maybe it's to step up in the church to start serving and mountain kids to start serving in student ministries. 
Welcome to Mountain. Maybe you interact with the kid like Isaiah and you say, hey, look, God wants you to be a pastor. And then boom, he's off on his course. Maybe you're the step. Maybe you're the next step, the established step. So I encourage you to take a look at that. Spend some time reflecting on 2017. Be, grat- be grateful for it and then be open towards 2018 because when we come back here, we're gonna jump into a series called This Is Us and it's gonna be an incredible series. We're looking at different things that establish and what makes Mountain Mountain. We're a community that's mission first. We're a community that loves kids. We're a community that celebrates diversity. We're a community like that. In these next six weeks, we're gonna look at that. And it's a great way to start the series but I encourage you to be open to it because God's gonna change you and God's gonna make some crazy stuff. It's always easy to say no, it really is. I say no a lot and I shouldn't, but I do. And I wanna say yes. So I'm praying for God to to allow me to say yes and to give me the soft heart to say yes. Just like Isaiah said, you know what? I wanna be a more open Isaiah in 2018. I wanna be a more open Zach in 2018. So God wants to invest in you. What's gonna, what's, what, how are you gonna allow? Are you gonna allow that to happen? You're gonna make that choice? You're gonna pray for that? What if you decide to be open to God's call? It's gonna be easy to say no, but you have a chance to say yes. So let's come back next year and let's say yes and say yes every single day as we head into 2018. God's got big plans, right? Big plans, because this is us and this is a community that's gonna change Hartford County and Baltimore and move outside these nation's borders as well. Amen? All right, let's pray. God, you're so great. We're so thankful for an opportunity to thank you. God, allow us to be grateful for 2017. It was a hard year for a lot of us. We're still thankful that you were still in the midst and you're still moving and you're still changing and you're still allowing us to move towards you. Let us be open for 2018. It's a big opportunity. It's a whole year, a whole calendar year, new hope, New days, new seasons are coming for a lot of us, if not all. And we have an opportunity to say yes to you and to be open and to move into the kingdom of God like you want us to, to be faithful servants to you and to change the world one person at a time, to be the hands and feet of Jesus in Puerto Rico, in Houston, in Florida, in Hartford County, wherever we are, let us be the hands and feet of Jesus. But first, let us be open to that. We thank you for that. We thank you for Jesus. Amen. God bless you.